Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I want to talk about colloids. Colloids are known as plasma volume expanders and what they do is just what their name says. They increase our plasma volume, so they increase that intravascular space. And how they do this is that they pull water into this space through oncotic pressure, also known as colloidal osmotic pressure. Now, how exactly does a colloid achieve this increasing of the plasma volume? Well, colloids are very unique because they are big molecules. And because they're so big, they don't escape that intravascular space. They can't go through that capillary wall. So there's a high number, hence high concentration of them within that intravascular space. And when we have a high concentration of something within that intravascular space, specifically these colloids, it increases on pressure. And when we increase oncotic pressure, we're going to get osmosis to occur because water is going to start to flow from that interstitial space into the intervascular space. And when water flows through there, that's going to increase the amount of water in that space, which is going to increase the volume within this compartment. Now, why exactly would we want to administer colloids to a patient and expand that plasma volume? Well, if they're experiencing hypovolemic shock, we'd want to because they literally have a low volume within their circulatory system and if we don't replenish it they are going to die or if they've experienced severe bleeding or major burns we can give them some colloids or if they have dropped their albumin levels in their blood experiencing hypoalbuminemia so we can give them human albumin to help replace that and that can increase their plasma volume. Now there's different types of colloids that can be administered to a patient. There are natural types such as human albumin, fresh frozen plasma and so forth. And then on the other hand, there's synthetic types such as hydroxyethyl starches, dextran and gelatin. Now you may be wondering, okay, what's the differences between colloids and crystalloids? Because in the previous lecture, we went over crystalloids and how they work in the body. Well, let's take a closer look at their differences. Colloids include albumin, dextran, hydroxyethyl starches, and gelatin, while crystalloids include those hypotonic, hypertonic, isotonic solutions. Colloids are large molecules that stay in that intravascular space longer, which again creates that on oncotic pressure so we can pull water into that intravascular space, while crystalloids are small molecules that don't stay too long in that intravascular space, so they don't create that pulling effect like colloids can. And colloids are very fast at expanding the intravascular space, and the amount that we administer to them equals roughly the amount that the patient has lost. However, with crystalloids, the patient's going to need high amounts of fluids to actually equal that amount that they lost. So there's that risk of overload edema. And unfortunately with colloids, there is a risk of allergic reaction and coagulation problems. While with crystalloids, there's no risk with allergic reactions or coagulation problems. And colloids tend to cost more to administer while crystalloids cost less and they're easier to access. You just simply go into your clean hold and get you a bag of fluids. Now let's talk about your role as a nurse whenever you're administering these colloids. So before you even administer the colloid, you want to check the patient's allergies and see if they've had any past reactions to colloids. Plus, take a look not only at those drug allergies, but those food allergies and check for any allergy to gelatin because gelatin is one of those synthetic colloids that can be used. And some patients I have seen in their medication history that they are allergic to gelatin. So we wouldn't want to administer that type of colloid. And then next, whenever you go to administer the colloid, you want to make sure that you're monitoring your patient's vital signs very closely per your hospital's protocol. So you want to make sure you monitor that heart rate oxygen saturation, temperature, blood pressure, and respiratory rate. Plus, because there is a risk of an allergic reaction with these colloids, you wanna make sure that your patient isn't having any itching, difficulty breathing, hypotension, or fever, because this could mean that they're having an allergic reaction. So if you do see these things, you wanna stop the colloid and notify the doctor immediately. And if your patient is just going into a full-blown anaphylactic reaction, you want to notify the rapid response team or call a code, whatever you need to do to get your patient help. In addition, your patient is at risk for bleeding problems, so those coagulation issues that can arise with colloids. So you wanna monitor their lab work, which could indicate that they're having potential bleeding problems. So look at those PTT, PT results. So they would be increased if we had an issue. Also look at the platelet count. It could drop 
or if they're experiencing hypotension tachycardia, that can mean that you have a bleed somewhere. So you wanna further investigate that. And then lastly, you wanna make sure that you're not overloading their intravascular system where they're going into fluid overload. Anytime we're giving a patient fluids or we're expanding their plasma volume, that's always a risk. So we wanna make sure that we're weighing them daily at the same time every day with the same scale, that you are measuring their intake and output strictly, you know exactly what they're taking in and what they are putting out. Plus, you don't see any signs and symptoms that they are in overload. For instance, are they experiencing crackles? Their lungs have an abnormal sound that may sound like this. or they're having edema, particularly in their extremities, like that lower leg, is it pitting edema? Or they have extra heart sounds, like an S3 gallop. All of that could indicate fluid volume overload. Okay, so that wraps up this review over colloids. And if you'd like to watch more videos in this series, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.